Fire Ministries International, where I am the pastor and founder and servant leader of Consuming Fire Ministries International, Apostle Jarvis Hines. And I want to welcome you all once again this morning, for truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And here at Consuming Fire Ministries International, we believe that the fire purifies and that the spirit and the word of God makes one alive. I want to welcome you once again to this live broadcast on the behalf of myself and Lady Vanessa Hines, to my assistant pastor, Pastor Susan Flores, and to Brother Emmanuel, and to Pastor uh, Vendetta Perry, and to all of our CFMI family that's out there. We love you. We thank God for you. And those of our covenant partners that are joining us locally and globally, we give God glory for you. For without you, this could not be possible. We know that churches are back in buildings and some are still doing virtual services. You could have joined any other service, but you decided to join with us today. And we want to welcome you uh, to our recording this morning. Glory be to God. And truly, there's a word from the Lord. There's a teaching today that has been blessing my socks off and everybody else's. So we're definitely going to get into that in a few minutes. But before we do... We just have a couple of brief uh, announcements. Also, uh, before I get into those announcements, I want to acknowledge my wife. Today would have been the day of my mother-in-law's birthday. She has a heavenly birthday today. Mm -hmm. Joyce Mullen, who's gone home to be with the Lord. And we want to honor her today. We, we a phenomenal woman. And I just don't like to call her mother-in-law. I call her mother because she was a mother to me. And uh, I had the opportunity around this time a couple of years ago to eulogize her. And uh, I, I miss her. And we, we thank God for it. My wife, that was her heart. And uh, just I just encourage my wife today and I encourage all of us on a serious note. Learn to love the ones that you are with. If you've got a mother that loved you and supported you and prayed for you, you are a blessed person. Hear me. Because once the mother is gone, there's no, you might have an auntie, you might have this, but no one can replace your mother. Hear what I'm saying? No one can. And so when you have one, if you send her flowers, take her to lunch, let her know how much you love her. You know, sometimes mothers have to do things that ain't always popular. There ain't no, ain't no manual on how to be a mother. <laughs> you learn through trial and error. Amen. But God teaches mothers how to take care of us and how to protect us. And I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. One thing I've always been fascinated with is mothers in the animal kingdom. If you watch any animal in the animal kingdom, I tell people, people think the male lion is the vicious. No, it's the lioness. The lioness is actually the one that hunts and brings the food back. The males just eat and sleep. If you really study it, it's the truth. The lioness is the one that protects the cubs. will fight for her children, any animal, no matter what species it is, will fight. And in the human species, the mother will fight for her kids to the death. It does not matter how big, how tall, how little. They will protect their children to the end. That's why we have to honor mothers. So today we pay homage to my mother and to my wife's mother, Joyce Mullen. We know she's in heaven rejoicing. She's in paradise. That's where she is, rejoicing. And that's where we all desire or should desire to go is to be with Jesus. When he comes back, we will meet him. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. With that being said, I want to get into the brief announcements. Once again, we want to thank all of our covenant partners and CFMI uh, for our sowing and giving. Let me just be perfectly clear. We are a ministry. We have obligations. We believe in tithe and offerings. We stand on Malachi 3 verses 6 through 12. Uh, about God saying, I'm the same God, I do not change, therefore you sons of Jacob, which is Israel, the people of God are not consumed. He said, will a man rob God? So how have you robbed me through the tithes and offerings? Let me explain something to you. Tithing was around before the law was even instituted. It was, it was Abram that brought a tenth to God before it was even commanded. And even once it got commanded, Jacob brought a tenth. So the tithe is the tenth. What God gives us. And on top of that, offerings. And on top of that, we believe in first fruits. That when you, according to Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, you honor the Lord with the first fruit of your substance and with uh, your, your increase and with all the first fruit of your substance. 
We believe that whenever God blesses you, you give it all to God. That's where it came from in the first place. Amen. So we want to ask those of you that are, are CFMI members, we, we the tithe and offering belong to God, but it helps to upreap and upkeep of the ministry with the things that we have to do for the kingdom of God. And to our covenant partners, there's ways that this ministry has been a blessing to you. There are ways that you can sow into us. And one of those ways, we do have our Zelle account. We do have our uh, Venmo account. We'll, we'll, my wife will put that information up at the end. So I won't repeat it, but we're going to put it up. And we're going to also make some changes to that shortly. And there's other ways. And then we also have our P.O. box, our post mail box. I will give that at the end if you want to send your, your check of money order to us. I'll have all that on there as well. How you can make that payable uh, to us. But if you want to be a blessing to myself, there's ways you can bless me. There's two ways. I do have cash out and you can go to dollar sign apostle 2775 or you can go to Venmo and that is apostle-1975. Those ways will be a blessing to me if I've been a blessing to you. Um, you can sow it to us those ways. But the, the other information will be given out after the end of the broadcast. You will be able to look on and see our Zelle information that you can give to CFMI because um, we're going to change some things on that eventually. Um, but if you do, my wife will have the information on those who want to be a blessing to us. And let me just say, this is good ground that when you sow, it will return back to you good measures Pressed down, shaking together, and running over shall men give into your bosom or your purse. It's the yes. translation. Yes. Your pocketbook. God will exchange it back to you. Amen. And we thank you for your prayers and for your financial support and your donations. We receive the tithes and offerings and first fruits because we do have expenses and things to do to advance and enhance the kingdom. And we could not do it without your support. So we thank all of you who have sown into us, who keep sowing, and those of you that bring your tithe into the storehouse, there's ways that you can do that, and that information will be put online. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Also, we're still online every Thursday at 1130 a.m. We're still on the DMV Powered Gospel Radio Network, and uh, my show, Fiery Furnace Broadcast, is still live, 1130 a.m. every Thursday. I'm on live and if you want to come on and be a part of that, those are ways, be the ways that you can be a part of this network. One of the ways is you can go to our World Wide Web at www.dmvpoweredgospelradio.net. dmvpoweredgospelradio.net. Okay? And you can also be a part of that and go on and click on the Fiery Furnace link and leave me a message, a prayer request financially and let us know how the... This broadcast has been a blessing to you, how you have grown in your relationship with the Lord. That helps us to stay on the air at this thriving and enhancing advancing network of, of DNV. Also, if you didn't get a chance to hear the show live on Thursday, you can go back and hit a pre-recording. You can go to https colon backs, backslash backslash uh, DMV powered gospel dot airtime dot pro. And you can go in and hear the pre-recording of the show that you missed. That's one way that you can hear it. Or if you want to be a part of the live broadcast, you can go to 206, area code 206 806 9770. That is the live number to call into the network to hear me teaching live on the network. It is area code 206 806 9770. You will hear me teaching live on the network. And I want to give a shout out to the prophetess and, and the apostle of that network, prophetess and apostle uh, Tanya Thomas and her husband for all that they do. Without them, we could not be able to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ locally and we're heard around the world. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And this is why your tithe and your offerings are such a support to us because we do have other expenses that we have to do. And we couldn't do it without the people of God. So we thank you for your prayers and your financial support. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. At this time, I'm going to prepare to bring up, she's no stranger to us. She is my assistant pastor and, I mean, a well-educated teacher. I mean, her, her accolades, I can be up here for days naming her accolades, but she's mm -hmm. a humble servant of the Lord. And uh, she teaches... Uh, she, a matter of fact, she not only is she my assistant, she's my teacher. So she taught me eschatology, eschatos. And I hope and pray that you have been taking your notes, that you have your highlighters and your pens 
and your pads out with you and please take notes because we want to get you to understand how the story ends. We don't want you to fear a book that you get a blessing from when you read it and understand it. And she's doing it slowly by slowly. She has a, a saying that you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And I, that's really been a blessing to me. We don't jump into the whole thing. You got to eat it in small portions. And eventually it will become uh, well enough for you to digest it. So after I pray, the next voice you will hear will be that of Dr. Susan Flores, Assistant Pastor of Consuming Fire Ministries International. Glory be to God. So let us pray. Let's go before the throne of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, God, you've allowed us to assemble before your people, oh God. And God, as I stand here, God, I stand in the gap for Consuming Fire Ministries International. I lift up that of Dr. Susan Flores, oh God. I pray that you will anoint her as a yielded vessel of clay, anoint her lips for the purpose and the plan you have ordained her for. And Father, we, we take authority over the airways right now in the name of Jesus. Let ears be open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through her. Let scales be removed from eyes that they may see Jesus as she's teaching being lifted up. And let stony hearts be replaced with hearts of flesh to be open to receive her. And oh God, we bind up any type of ill communication that will try to interrupt our internet process that will try to clog up the airways for people not to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying through her. We bind up every demonic stronghold. We pull it down now in the name of Jesus. Anoint her with a fresh anointing that will destroy the yokes of the devil that a soul may leave asking what must I do to be saved? And in the name of Jesus, as she continues to teach and we go throughout the rest of this service, we pray that you will continue to be glorified. And we who are the people and the sheep of your pasture, we shall be edified. It is this and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I present to you now, Dr. Susan Flores. Amen. 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 Praise God. Good morning, good morning, hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle, for that wonderful prayer. Amen. Um, just very quickly, there's going to be a lot of information given out today. So please take your notes. Um, we will be uploading this later on YouTube. I highly suggest you go back and watch it a couple of times because you're not going to get it all as I'm going through it during this time. But... Um, I thank God that I have the opportunity to not only be a professor at WordWise Institute of Eschatology, I am a student, still will always be a student yes. of the Word of God. And I thank Dr. Curtis Dotson and Dr. Jalei Dotson, yes. who are our chancellors and vice chancellors at WordWise Institute of Eschatology for the teaching and the continual support um, I love that they're accessible. If I have questions, if I'm in a study, I can pick up the phone and call Dr. D and, or Lady J and say, I have a question about this, or I'm not connecting the dots here. And they're very, very accommodating. So with the fact that you get an education at WordWise Institute of Eschatology, you also get a family. Yes. So I'm grateful for that. Yes. I'm grateful for our WWIE family. And once again, if you want more information on the school, please go to our website. It is www.wordwiseinstitute.com. And you can look at the um, staff, the testimonies. We have information on the school. There are some YouTube videos, which I highly suggest, suggest that you watch. Um, there's just a plethora of information on the website. So please avail yourselves to that so that you can get more than what you're getting just through the airways today through me and one of the the model of our school is if you don't know the book of revelation you don't know how the story ends mm. and so i think that's very relevant yes. we know it that everything started in genesis everything ends in revelation yeah. so you need to know the end of the book the end of the story mm -hmm. all right I'm going to get into our teaching. I'm not going to go and say and read every scripture that I'm going to give you guys today, but write them down so you can do what? Your own research. Yes. And as Paul told Timothy, study and show yourself a proof. All right. So last week I talked to you guys about Lucifer. I gave you his history, how he began, that he was cast out of heaven. 
And so now today I'm going to talk about Satan. Mm -hmm. Lucifer and Satan are the same being. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to make this clear. There's nowhere in the Bible that says Lucifer is Satan. However, if you look at several passages, you can see that Lucifer can be no other than Satan. And I'll give you these passages. Isaiah 14, 12. And remember last week we went through Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 when we saw when, Satan, when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. And then we see um, Luke 10, 18. And this is where Jesus referred to Satan. And he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Okay. So you have Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, and Luke 10, 18. So those are your scriptures that you can relate that Satan and Lucifer are one and the same being. I want to give you some names of Satan. And the reason I want to give you these names is because this is going to help you to identify who Satan is. And it's going to talk about the character of Satan. First of all, we know that he is known as the devil. We see this in 1 Peter 5 and 8. And we also see this in Revelation 12, 9. And Revelation 12, 9 says, The great dragon, the old serpent, he is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. So we see it in 1 Peter 5 and 8 and Revelation 12 and 9 that Satan is also known as the devil. Mm -hmm. Then we see in Revelation 12 10 he is called the accuser of the brethren he is the one that goes before god and accuses us he tries to um this is why jesus is our advocate he's our 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 attorney in heaven as he sits at the right hand of god he is our attorney so when the devil comes to try to accuse us he steps up and says no 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 my blood already took care of that so mm -hmm. beat it satan um, then we see that he is known as a serpent in Genesis 3 and 1. He is known as a dragon in Revelation 12 and 9. He is known as the ruler of this world in John 12, 31 and 14, 30. He is known as the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air in Ephesians 2 and 2. He is known as the God, that's a small g, G-O-D of this age in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. He is the evil one in Matthew 6, 13, John 17, 15, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. He is the tempter in Matthew 4 and 3. He is the wicked one in 1 John 2, verses 13 through 14, and in 5, 19. He is the roaring lion in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Mm -hmm. He is an adversary. He is our adversary. Remember those ridiculous statistics I gave you guys last week on how many people don't even believe that there's a real devil? Mm. Well, he is our adversary in 1 Peter 5 and 8 and our enemy in Matthew 13, 28. So for those who don't believe in him, they don't understand that he's an enemy and an adversary to us. We know that he is a liar and the father of lies, according to John 8, 44. Mm -hmm. And he is known as a deceiver in 2 Corinthians eleven three. Mm. So I know I gave you guys a lot of scripture. And like I said, you might have to roll this back and watch it a couple times to get all the scriptures. But um, I, I think it's important for you to understand these, that what he's called in the Bible. So when you see these names in the Bible, you can identify that they're talking about Satan. Okay? So along with the name change, because remember when Satan was kicked out, when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, his name was changed from Lucifer, Lucifer to Satan. Right. So he had a location change, he had a, a name change, he had a position change. Mm -hmm. And 
So he is now this dark, ugly, evil being who hates God and hates everything that God stands for. And this is what is important for us to understand. Satan is a real being. He's not a personification of evil. He is an actual being. Remember I told you last week he was created. He was an angel that was created by Jesus. But he is our enemy. He is not our friend. Um, I had, uh, I've heard of this a couple of times, and I had somebody ask me, what if Satan repented? Would God forgive him? Mm -hmm. Satan is never going to repent. <laughs> he is not interested in repentance. He is interested in being God, and not just being God, but being God's God and being a troll of God. Mm -hmm. He is not interested in being forgiven. He doesn't feel he did anything wrong. Remember, he's full of pride. Mm -hmm. All right? So no, that's <laughs> not going to happen. That's why he's our adversary, and you guys have to realize he's not some, some guy that, you know, well, he made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. No, that is not who Satan is, okay? And as we go through this book of Revelation, you're going to see how much he hates God and how much he hates you, <laughs> okay? Um, so I just, I just want to make sure that we understand that. Now... We're going to go through a lot of information today, and a lot of our uh, information I'm going to go um, get from Revelation chapter 13, but I'm not going to read the whole Revelation chapter 13 until next week, because I want to go through that uh, point by point in Revelation chapter 13, but I will uh, talk about uh, the, the false prophet and the Antichrist in chapter 13 today. But I'm going to take a little detour first, because... There's two things you need to know about before we get into the Antichrist and the false prophet. One of them, I'm going to begin with talking about the unholy trinity, which may be the first time a lot of you have heard about this. And then I'm also going to talk about um, the tribulation period. These are two mm -hmm. things that you need to understand a little bit about before we get into chapter 13. Mm -hmm. So we all know that the word trinity is not mentioned in the Bible, but the concept of the holy trinity is well defined. And we see a picture of this in Matthew 3, verses 16 through 17. And remember, this is when Jesus is being baptized. And as he comes up out of the water, he hears the voice of God speaking over him, and a dove descends upon him. So that is the depiction of the Holy Trinity. You have the Father speaking, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and Jesus coming up out of the water. That's our Holy Trinity. But there's also an old, unholy, satanic trinity. Remember, the devil will take anything that God has, and he will twist it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, his, that's what he does with his unholy trinity. Mm -hmm. So who is this unholy trinity? Let's begin in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1. And this says... And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his ten horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Now, one of the things I learned from Dr. Curtis Dodson at Wordwise Institute of Eschatology is that earlier mans uh, manuscripts of Revelation chapter 13 says in verse 1, and he stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a wild beast rise up out of the sea. So the he in this passage is Satan. And Satan is standing at the sea and he is calling forth the beast, which is the Antichrist. Remember I told you when we did the what you need to know that when you see the beast um, that comes up out of the sea, that's the Antichrist. So you have Satan standing at the sea, and he's calling forth the Antichrist, okay? And then in Revelation chapter 13, 11, it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now this beast is the false prophet. Remember, I told you guys that the first beast that comes out of the sea is the Antichrist. The mm -hmm. second beast that comes out of the land is the false prophet. 
So you have Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. That is the unholy trinity. Antichrist and the false prophet get their powers from Satan. They are evil, wicked, and the personification of Satan. And now I'll go a little bit more in detail as we go through. Now I want to talk about the tribulation period. We are not in tribulation. Yes. I know last year in 2020 was probably one of the roughest years that a lot of people have seen in a long time, but that is not tribulation. It was not tribulation. Tribulation is a seven year period where God is going to pour out his wrath on, it's a wrath of judgment, and he's going to release it on the earth and on the people who rejected Christ. That's who the wrath is, uh, and judgment is for. Those that are left behind after the rapture and the earth itself. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be released on the earth because there's going to be a reconfiguration of the earth to prepare for a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? So, there, the tribulation period is separated into two halves. Mm -hmm. The first half is called the tribulation period, mm -hmm. and the second half is called the mm -hmm. great tribulation. And we see this, that Jesus named it the great tribulation in Matthew 24, verse 21. So Jesus is the one that said it's going to be a great tribulation. And I can't wait till I get to teach on Matthew 24, because it's so misconstrued mm -hmm. uh, and, and mistaught. But um, one of the, the most significant event that takes place that separates these two periods is when the Antichrist goes into the Holy Temple and declares himself to be God. We know that to be the abomination of desolation. That's in Daniel 9.27, Daniel 11.31, and Matthew 24.15. So when this occurs, that is the beginning of the Great Tribulation period. Now, I know that um, I told you guys in the beginning that the book of Revelation is one of the most chronologically arranged books in the Bible, and we know this through metatata, remember that word, that Greek word. So the reason I say we are not in tribulation is because tribulation does not begin until Revelation chapter 6. We are not in Revelation chapter 6 because the church gets raptured in Revelation chapter 1. So we're still here. Mm -hmm. I'll put it this way. I'm still here. And I know I'm getting raptured. Mm -hmm. So we ain't in tribulation. So yeah. that should, that's what I want you guys to understand. We are not in tribulation. What we are in is 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 3 verses 1 through 13. Mm -hmm. That's what we are in. We are in those perilous times where men become lovers of themselves where they are selfish, where they are doing the things that we see going on now that we consider to be chaotic and anarchy, mm -hmm. okay? So this is what the state of the world is going to be in when the Antichrist gets ready to show up on the scene. Yes. So what's going to happen is, you see we're already, and, and I need you guys to go back and look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Read that on your own, but you will see what's going on, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's what's up right now. So that is what's going to happen. Then in Revelation chapter 4, the rapture is going to occur. Mm -hmm. So now, imagine, just imagine this. People driving that they're going to just get poof, snatched out of their cars. You're going to have car racks. Uh, people that are flying planes, going to be no pilot. Pilot gone, boom, planes crashing. You're going to have all this destruction going on around because all of these people disappeared. And those that are left behind wondering, where's my, where's this, where's that? Mm -hmm. Maybe a pregnant woman, pregnant one minute, not pregnant the next. Mm -hmm. So the world's going to be freaking out. Yeah. The world is going to be freaking out. And they're going to be looking for somebody to come in and bring order. Mm -hmm. That's where the Antichrist comes in. Mm -hmm. He's going to come in to save the day. Mm -hmm. And as he comes in to save the day, People are going to start giving their attention to him. They're going to start looking at him as God. 
because they are going to say, no, nah, God, the, the God that did all of this, we don't like that God. Mm. Remember when we're raptured, the only people left on the earth are going to people, be people who are unsaved. There will be no Christians mm -hmm. left on the earth. So all of you people that said God told you that you're going to have to preach the word of God after the rapture, maybe you ate something you shouldn't have. That's all I got to say about that. So the world is going to be chaotic. It's going to have a lot of anarchy. It's going to be a lot of confusion. And it's going to be a time where anything goes. Anything's going to go. People are going to be doing whatever they want to do because finally these mean old Christians aren't going to tell us that it's wrong for us to marry our dog if we want to marry our dog. Mm. We don't need these Christians telling us that we can't go in and loot this store and take everything we want because we need it. That's what's going to be going on during that time because the church was supposed to be the moral compass of the world. So now the church is gone. Mm -hmm. So what you have left is a hot mess. So... This is why when, when, when Apostle does the altar call this, this time today, please consider. You don't want to be here when all this stuff is going on. You mm -hmm. truly do not. Now, one of the most comprehensive and informational studies on the beast, the Antichrist, um, I, had, uh, I wanted to um, give you guys an opportunity to get this information. So I asked Dr. Dodson if I would be allowed to... Um, give you guys the website for a teaching that he does called Meet the Beast. If you go to this website, it's our website, www.wordwiseinstitute.com backslash wordwise-store. You can get his Meet, Meet the Beast MP3 and it's, it's a very extensive study on the Antichrist. It's, it's, it's an excellent, excellent teaching. Yes. So, um, and that's one of the things we were required to listen to mm -hmm. when we started studying Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. because it really gives you a picture of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's start with Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now this seal, this is the first seal that's open. This is the beginning of tribulation. When the seal is open, that's when tribulation begins. And it is Jesus Christ himself who is opening the seals to release this judgment. Okay? So now this white horse comes out. This white horse is a it, remember I told you there's a lot of uh, metaphors and there's allegories and all this stuff. Well, that right white horse represents the spirit of the Antichrist. So it's not going to be an actual white horse. This is the Antichrist. He's going to come out, and when he comes forth, because he has no arrow and bows, people believe he's going to be a man of peace. Remember I told you he was going to be trying to bring the world together, but it's a false peace mm -hmm. because his agenda is going to be to promote himself because he wants to be the world dominator mm. that's what he wants and so he's going to come out with a false peace trying to bring the world together it's going to be a big kumbaya mm -hmm. yeah come on everybody <laughs> let's let's get the world back up let's get our economy going let's get our politics going let's get this going let's go and people are going to want to do it mm -hmm. because remember the chaos and anarchy going on okay so um just so you guys know i said this before no barack obama was not the antichrist <laughs> trump was not the antichrist joe biden is not the antichrist you will not know who the antichrist is until chapter six but guess what we will be raptured in four so, hello? Good. Right? Okay, so it, we will not know who he is until the tribulation begins. That's when he will be presented. So he's going to be coming out, making promises. Um, he's going to be one of the greatest politicians that ever lived. And he is going to promote his agenda. And people are going to be supporting him and loving him because he's this wonderful guy that's going to finally bring world peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Okay, so they think. So they think, right. Um, now, we go into, um, I want to talk about the phases that lead up to the Antichrist and him establishing his kingdom. Because if you guys understand this, then it'll help you to know that we're not in tribulation. We're not going to, the Antichrist is not revealed right now. So the first thing, the first phase is 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 13, which we are in right now, the last of the last days. We are in the last of the last days, mm -hmm. okay? This is when the world will be in a state of anarchy and hedonism and violence will prevail. Mm -hmm. That's where we are right now, okay? The second is the rapture of the church. Mm -hmm. When the rapture of the church, that's phase two. The last phase, which I think is, is the most scariest to me, is um, the repositioning of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Holy Spirit is here, and he's holding back the evil forces. Mm -hmm. But when tribulation begins, the Holy Spirit is going to step aside, mm -hmm. and evil, Satan, the Antichrist, all of that mm -hmm. is going to have full reign in mm -hmm. the earth realm. Mm -hmm. Full reign in the earth realm. You think it's bad right now. Sure. The Holy Spirit is holding back mm -hmm. evil forces. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit steps back and allows evil to prevail, then you've got a, a whole nother ungodly picture of what the world is going to be like. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, we'll be raptured. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, um, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, we see that Satan is calling out the Antichrist from the sea. We know that this sea is the Mediterranean Sea because when John wrote this book, he was looking out. He was on the island of Patmos. He was looking out, and that's the sea. That's the area that he could see. And remember the word sea is a metaphor for the people of that region. So the Antichrist is coming from this particular region. This is known as the European Union, which will also be called the Revived Roman Empire. It's going to be called the Revived Roman Empire. So all these people that are looking for the Antichrist to come uh, somewhere else, he's coming from this region around the Mediterranean Sea. One of the other things that um, is really interesting about the Antichrist is that the Antichrist is going to be killed, but then he's going to come back to life. I know, right? We thought only Jesus resurrected from death. Well, in Revelation 13, verse 3, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Mm. So he's killed, and then he's brought back to life. And because of this resurrection, people who were following this Antichrist are going to be more avid, more dedicated, and more devoted followers. Mm -hmm. Because what did I tell you about the devil? Everything that God does, he tries to imitate and twist. Mm -hmm. So Jesus came back resurrected, right? This is why people are going to believe the Antichrist is God. Yeah. This is going to further their belief. This is going to solidify their belief. So it's important for us to remember that um, at this time also, this is not this guy that comes on the scene, he's not going to, they're not going to call him the Antichrist, okay, mm -hmm. you guys? He's going to have a name. Mm -hmm. And He's going to be their political leader. He's going to be the world leader. So they're worshiping their leader. They're not worshiping an antichrist. Understand that. They're worshiping this guy that, oh my goodness, he's all that in a bag of chips to us. Mm -hmm. And now he came back to life. Oh yeah, that's God. Yeah. That's God. Yeah. So um, I want to go through, and again, I'm just going to give you guys some scriptures, some of the names of antichrist in the Bible. And... 
you guys can go back and, and read the scriptures for these names. But it, it's important for you guys, I think it's important for you guys to see the names so that you know when you see that name in the Bible who the Bible's talking about, but also it speaks to the characteristics of that individual. So one of the first um, things I want to do is I want to, you know, I'm a, I got to break it down, the Greek and, and the Strongs and all of that. So Antichrist is composed from two Greek words. The first word mm -hmm. in Greek is anti, A-N-T-I, mm -hmm. and the Greek word Christos, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-S. Anti is Strong's number G473, which means against, opposite, instead of, or a substitution. Christos is Strong's number G5547, which means Christ or anointed. Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God. So when the two words are combined, they can literally mean instead of, against, or opposed to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so what the Antichrist wants, wants people to see is, I'm the Christ, not him Christ, me Christ. Right. That's what he's saying. So everything that he stands for is against what Christ stood for. Mm -hmm. But remember, people are going to be thinking he's all that in a bag of chips because he's, you know, can't come to save the day. Mm -hmm. So one of the words that we see quite often in the Bible, and particularly in the book of Revelation when we're looking at the Antichrist, is the word beast. He is beast. Um, we see this in the first beast in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. Then in Revelation chapter 17, 3 and 8, and he is also referred to as the wild beast out of the sea. Mm. He is known as the lawless one. And we see this in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. Because he practices sins and lawlessness, he is referred to the lawless one. He is also known as the man of sin and the son of perdition. And this is also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 12. And what I think is interesting in 2 Thessalonians, if you remember we talked about connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. So if you connect 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians verses 2, uh, chapter 2, verses 3 through 12, with Revelation 13, when we talk about the Antichrist coming back to life, and then we'll go through and show you all the stuff that the false prophet does. This is what the uh, second Thessalonians says. It says God's gonna give the Antichrist power to do signs and lying wonders. Mm -hmm. And because of the people's rejection of Jesus Christ, God will give them a strong delusion. Mm -hmm. He's gonna let them go ahead and believe what they see. They're gonna think it's real, okay? so. Connecting the dots. Go back and look at 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 through 12, and read Revelation 13. Amen? He's also known as the foolish shepherd in Zechariah 11, verses 15 through 17. The prince who will come in Daniel 9, 26. And the little horn in Daniel 7, 8. Now, the characteristics of the Antichrist, now, this is, this is going to be a lot. This is going to be a lot, so I'm going to go through quickly with this as well. The Antichrist will be an intellectual genius, according to Daniel 8.23. He's not only going to have extraordinary intelligence, he's going to be the most intelligent person uh, alive at that time. He will know how to operate successfully in politics, finance, military strategy, religion. He will speak every language. He is going to be the most intelligent person alive. He is going to be an oratorical genius, according to Daniel 11.36. He's going to be the most eloquent, influential, and dynamic speaker ever known to the world. 
He's going to be the master of words. He's going to be awe-inspiring, provoking people to follow him and support his agenda. And most of what he says is going to be blasphemous towards God mm -hmm. because it's going to be all about him. He's the God. Not that God that tore all the world up that I had to come and save. I'm the God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. He will be a philosophical genius. He will be a master at presenting an anti-God philosophy that will sway the masses. And we see this in Revelation 16, 13 and 1 Timothy 4 and 1. He will be a political and governmental genius. Revelation 17, 11 through 10, I mean 11 through 12, and 16 through 17. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any politician that's ever been born more savvy than the Antichrist. He is not only going to control the government of his region, he's going to co control the whole world government. He's going, to, he's going to control everything in the world. They're going to all be reporting to him. He's going to be that world leader because that's what his agenda is when he begins. And he's going to promote himself and he's going to have some avid followers. And there's going to be people that will die for him and kill for him because they believe in him so strongly okay he will be a commercial genius according to daniel eleven forty three, 43 and revelation 13 16 through 17. Mm -hmm. and we will see this when i go into the mark of the beast next week mm -hmm. he will control the commercial trade he's going to be the one that's going to say who can buy, who can sell, who can have a, a house, mm -hmm. who's going to live in the gutter. That's going to be him. He's going to have control over all of it. Mm -hmm. He is going to be a military genius, mm -hmm. according to Revelation 13, 4. There will be no military in the world that will be able to stand against him. So if he wants something and he takes his army, he's getting it. Because there's not going to be anybody that has a more, um, I'm going to say, extreme military than he does. Remember, when we're out of here, you guys, when the rapture occurs, there's going to be a whole lot of arsenals left behind. There's going to be nuclear weapons left behind. And he's going to have control over all of it. He's going to have the control over everything. Mm -hmm. He will be a religious genius. He will have knowledge of every religion, but his goal will be to turn every person from worshiping Jesus to worshiping him. Mm -hmm. So he's going to know Hinduism. He's going to know Islam. He's going to know Christianity. He's going to know all those religions all over the world. And he's going to say, it's okay that you believe that, but who came in and saved the day? Who came back to life? Who came and gave you this? Who lets you eat and trade? Who lets you do all this stuff? And that's how he's going to sway these people to follow him. They are going to be worshiping him, idolizing him. They're going to want to be like him because they think he's just the greatest thing. He will have a defiant personality being full of arrogance and pride. Who does that sound like? Mm -hmm. Satan. Yeah. You know why? Yeah. Because a lot of people believe that the Antichrist, that Satan will, is incarnate. He is the, the like Jesus was God in the flesh, mm -hmm. the Antichrist will be Satan in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's what they believe. That's what a lot of uh, theologians believe, that the Antichrist is going to be Satan in the flesh. So everything that Satan is, the Antichrist is. Mm. Okay? And then, um, of course, he's going to exalt and magnify himself. And we see this in Daniel 11, 36 through 37. He will emerge from a reunited, reunited Roman Empire. We see this in Daniel 7, 8 and 9, 26. This is what William S. McBurney says. Is Satan cruel? then the Antichrist will be cruel. Is Satan a liar? The Antichrist will be a liar. 
Is Satan treacherous, bloodthirsty, contemptuous, unreliable? The Antichrist will be all of that. Why? Because like I said, he is controlled by Satan. Everything he does is Satan. Mm. Now, let's talk about the false prophet. That's the second beast that we see coming up out of the sea in Revelation 13, verses 11 through 17. So this second beast, this false prophet, this is another um, person that Satan is controlling. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be the world religious leader. The Antichrist is going to be the political leader, but the false prophet is going to be the religious leader. Okay? He is going to talk about loving, accepting, diversity, gender equality, all, you know, let's condemn racism, sexism, poverty, and all forms of discrimination. But he is a slithering monster. This was a quote from Damon Duck. Now, the false prophet is going to have the same authority as the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. They're on the same level. But the false prophet isn't going to promote himself. He's going to promote the Antichrist. So the, where the Antichrist is saying, look at me, look at me, mm -hmm. the false prophet is saying, look at him, look at him. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the mouthpiece for the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. He's that public relations officer. He's the one, by the way, that is not only going to create the mark, he's going to enforce the mark. Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that next week. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be the person who is in control of all the communication and the media of the world. Mm -hmm. He is going to be in charge of mass publicity and all eyes will be on the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And so you think about it now, think about how we're using Facebook now, how we have YouTube, how we have TikTok and Twitter and all these other things out there. We've got satellites all over space. That's gonna be in his control. And he's going to use all of those resources to tell everybody that's left in the world, hey, this is the dude right here. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the one that's God. This is who you should be following. This is who you should be worshiping. And what's so interesting about the false prophet is that he's going to show himself to be a miracle worker by causing fire to come down from heaven and bringing the image of the Antichrist beast to light. And we're going to look at this more in 13. But what the false prophet does is, remember, um, we see this with Moses. We've seen this with Elijah. We've mm -hmm. seen all these pro God's prophets, all the miracle signs and wonders that they did. Mm -hmm. These two men, the Antichrist and the false prophet, are going to be able to have those same abilities mm -hmm. to replicate what God, and God has allowed it, you guys. Mm -hmm. God has permitted it. Don't think God is just... Oh, well, we're just going to let the devil have his way. God has a plan. That's why you need to read this book of Revelation. So you can see the whole plan and purpose of God. Okay? But he's going to be able to call fire down from heaven. And then he's going to make a um, sculpture of the Antichrist. So he's going to make this statue of the Antichrist. And then he's going to make the statue come alive. He's going to make this statue come alive. And when he does that, guess what the people are going to be doing? Oh, yes, he's the God. He's the God. But the false prophet isn't going to take the credit. He's going to say, that's the one who needs the credit, the Antichrist. He's the one that's going to do these miracles, but he's going to point everything to the Antichrist. Okay? So he's going to pretend that he cares about the people. He's going to say he loves everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, we understand, you know, that you guys all believe in this religion and that religion. But what he's going to do is he's going to force people to worship the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. He's going to force them. And if they don't, he's going to kill them. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that's going to enforce the mark. Mm -hmm. Or he's going to kill them. Mm -hmm. So the Antichrist isn't even forcing the mark. It's the false prophet who's going to enforce that mark. Okay. So he's going to be this great religious leader. And I think I said this before. No, he is not the Pope. Mm 
Right. Stop right. looking at the Pope, everybody. The false <laughs> prophet will not be the Pope. Right. The Pope will not be in existence mm -hmm. because the, the, the Catholic religion won't be permitted. Right. The only religion that's going to be permitted is the religion of the Antichrist. Okay? So the role of the false prophet will be to make the new religion appealing and, and um, good to men. No doubt it will combine all the features of the religious system of men. It will appeal to man's total personality and take full advantage of his carnal appetite. The dynamic appeal of the false prophet will lie in his skill in combining political expediency with religious passion, mm -hmm. self-interest, and benevolent, benevolent philanthropy, lofty sentiments, mm -hmm. with blatant sophistry, moral platitude, mm -hmm. with unbridled self-indulgence. Now that is not Christianity. It's not. Everything that's opposite to what Jesus taught us. Jesus told us there were two great commands, to love God and then to love one another. Mm-hmm. So what's the false prophet going to do? He's going to say, love the Antichrist and love yourself. You get to come before anybody else. Mm -hmm. You like it, I love it. Yeah, you want to do it, I'm going to co-sign it. Mm. That's the kind of religion that's going to um, exist. And this is going to, there, people are going to be so excited to accept this one world religion because it's finally giving them the freedoms to just love and be, and they'll think the 60s are back when they're <laughs> running around with the peace signs and the sunflowers. Oh, yes, yeah, so um, so that's they're gonna be they're gonna be all excited about mm -hmm. what the false prophet is talking about, and they are going to want to do it because remember the Antichrist is their savior. So the, prophet, the false prophet is going to convince the world he is from God by his false miracles. He's going to fool all the religious people. He's going to suck them into politics. He's going to suck them into serving the Antichrist and worshiping the beast. And he's going to suck them into taking the mark of the beast. And remember, he is not going to hesitate to kill anyone who defies him. And he, doesn't, he will not hesitate to kill anyone who will not worship the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And the Antichrist has these armies. Remember that. He's got control of the, the munitions in this world. So if the false prophet is telling you, you need to worship the Antichrist, and you say no, everything, remember they're, they're equal. Everything the Antichrist has, the false prophet has. So mm -hmm. all the false prophet has to do is make a phone call. Hey, uh... This person ain't in compliance, and so the false prophet marches his army over there, and you either gonna comply or you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. That's how that's gonna work. Mm. Now, like I said, God has a plan. Mm -hmm. We don't want to think that God is just gonna let the whole world go amuck, and that's gonna be that. Mm -hmm. Although the whole world will be going amuck. And I haven't even talked about the plagues that are being gonna be released in the land. I haven't talked about the demons that are going to be released in the land. I haven't talked about the earthquakes that are going to happen, the meteors that are going to be hitting the earth, how one third of the earth is going to be killed, the waters, the greenery, all of that's going to be killed. I haven't talked, those, those are the other judgments. I'm just barely telling you guys about the Antichrist and the false prophet. Mm -hmm. So along with all this other stuff going on, there's going to be continual war. There's going to be continual murdering. There's going to be famine that hits the land. There's going to be so much stuff going on in addition to what I just told you guys was going on with the Antichrist and the false prophet. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what happens to the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the Satan? What happens to them? Well... If you go to Revelation chapter 19, mm -hmm. verses 1 through 21, this is where we see Jesus' second coming. He's going to return with his mighty army. Who is the mighty army? We, the church, are going to be with him. 
There's going to be angels with him. There's going to be Old Testament saints with him. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Jesus is coming back with the army. Remember I told you Satan's army can't uh, win, uh, can't be beaten on the earth realm? Well, guess what? Jesus' army come and whoop them up real good. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the Antichrist gets beat up. This is called the Battle of Armageddon, by the way. When you see this battle in Revelation 19, this is the Battle of Armageddon. This is the second coming of Christ. He's coming back with his church and along with the other entities, I said. And he is going to engage in this very short battle with the Antichrist and his army. And, of course, Jesus will prevail. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with the Antichrist and the false prophet? In Revelation 20, verses 1 through 3, we see that, um, oh, I'm sorry, in, let me take you to Revelation 19, and uh, verse, uh, Revelation 19 and verse 20, excuse me, let me do that real quick. And Revelation 19, verse 20 says, And the beast, which we know is the Antichrist, was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them, and had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These were both cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So, remember I told you guys before, the first two occupants of hell is going to be the, the Antichrist and the false prophet. They're not just going to be thrown into hell. They're going to be thrown into hell alive. So if you can imagine being thrown into a fiery lake alive, just constantly burning, constantly burning, constantly burning. That's what's going to happen to the false prophet and to the Antichrist. Now, Satan isn't going to have that same fate at the time. In Revelation uh, chapter 20, verses 1 through 3, we see Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years, and then he's going to be released again. And I know a lot of people are like, why didn't God just kill him then? Why didn't God just throw him in the fire then? Well, one of the things we will know and learn, you guys, we're not going to know all the answers while we're here. We won't know why God did everything that he did until we get face to face with God. And then Jesus promises that we will then be given the mysteries. The mysteries will be revealed to us. So we don't have the whys. Other than this, during that 1,000 year reign of Christ, which we know as the millennium, there's going to be people who have never been tempted by Satan. They're going to be serving Christ because that's all they know. So God is going to give them an opportunity to see if they're really committed to serving Christ or do you want to follow the beast? And you know why he does that? Because he knows there's people who really want to follow the beast. Right. They really want to follow after mm -hmm. Satan. And so mm -hmm. when Satan comes back, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that begin to follow Satan. So many that we have a second war called the War of Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. And this happens in Revelation 20 verses 7 through 10. This time, Satan loses, and I told you all my favorite scripture in the whole book of Revelation, Revelation 20 and 10. That is when he is cast into the lake of fire brimstone with the beast and the false prophet. So he does have a, an end. Satan has an end, the Antichrist has an end, and the false prophet all have an end. And that's it for today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I, I want to say this before I conclude today. I, as Dr. Susan was, was teaching, I want you to see, number one, we earned our education. They didn't just, she didn't just go to school and just, they just gave her a degree. You can see it through the teaching that she, that she studied, that she researches. And, and, and I want you to know I myself are in the process of writing our comprehensive eschatological report where I'm going to have to make a whole document of everything she just said and then some. So we're learning this. They're not giving us this. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I was thinking about the candies called now laters. My and, favorite. And, and I love now laters. And I want to use now laters as an analogy. Either you're going to listen to us now or you're going to listen to us later. Mm -hmm. But you're going to listen 
to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through us. Because mm -hmm. this is where the church is lacking. Did you hear all the things she said? Mm -hmm. how, how the agenda, all this, God is aware of this because he's omniscient. This has been ordained to go this way. Mm -hmm. So it's not a surprise. And when she said Revelation chapter 6, the group that I was in when I got my master's from WordWise, we had to write on what's called the four horses of the apocalypse. And she gave an analogy of that, that white horse, most who don't know, is the spirit of the Antichrist, that when that first seal is open, and that begins what she stated as tribulation. Okay? And so these are the things that you need to know because the true rider she described is Jesus on in Revelation 19 coming back with us mm -hmm. and the armies of heaven and the, and, and, and the uh, Old Testament saints. So these are the things that we need to know and prepare for. So as she says, stop saying Joe Biden is the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Stop it. That's Barack crazy. Obama was not the Antichrist. <laughs> Neither was Donald Trump. We are in, first of all, we're still in the church age, mm -hmm. okay? And so these are the things that Dr. Susan has taught, and I want you to understand. And I know she's not up here sweating and throwing rags and jumping over tables and chairs. She's teaching you. And this is where we are neglected. Even when we preach to some of you, you still don't remember what I said. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if I yell or scream or teach it's up to you to do the research according to 2 Timothy 3 and, and, and what he says. 16, he says, study to show thyself, no, 2, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to know truth. We're, and, and let me just throw this out here, and I'm going to call the call for discipleship. When Jesus left the earth, it was the end times. When Jesus ascended back to heaven, we have been in the end times since Christ, the Christos, the anointed one, left the earth. We've been in the end times since then. And what we're experiencing is 2 Timothy. This is why we're not in tribulation, people mm -hmm. of God. We have to know the dispensations and the hour and the time that we are in as believers. And this is why she's teaching how the story is. I've got notes that I'm taking and I'm still learning. And I'm learning this as a pastor, apostle. None of us know everything. Amen. And if you do, get away from a person like that. Mm -hmm. Because the day you stop learning is the day you're ready to go to be with him. Mm -hmm. yes. You never stop learning as long as you're on this earth. You learn every day of your life. Mm -hmm. And I pray what she just presented to you today, she said something very pivotal. And I want to issue that today. You don't want to be here during tribulation period. And so the way to escape that is to accept Jesus Christ. And we offer him to you today. Mm -hmm. We beseech you, which means we urge you, we beg you, we plead with you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Now, we got people that will accept him because they know he can save them. But he's also Lord, which means he's ruler over your life. Mm -hmm. Which simply means you, when you submit to him, your life is no longer your own. You know, we say that's so why I give myself away. Do you really? Mm -mm. <laughs> Do you really give yourself away? <laughs> because when you give yourself away, you just basically said, my life is not my own. Yes. He's now ruler and head over my life. And that is the one you want to have to rule and to control your life. Because he's the one that gave you life in the first place. So wherever you are today, if you don't know who Jesus is, we offer Christ to you today. We ask you whether you're behind your computer, whether you're in a hotel room, you could be in a work release, wherever you may be right now. If you're watching this, we ask you to raise your hands and to repeat after us. We pray for you to receive salvation and to see Jesus. We need you to repeat after me, Father. Father, in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, after hearing this teaching, after hearing this teaching I, repent, I repent and I confess, and I, confess, and I, accept, and I accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as, my Lord, as my Lord and as my Savior. And as my Savior. Today, Today, I ask him, I ask him to, come into my life, to come into my life, to be my Lord, be my Lord and my God. And my God. I, submit, I submit and I surrender, and I surrender my will. My 
my life to him. And I do this by faith in the Son of God. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have just repeated according to Romans 10 and verse 9, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And if you've done that, I want to welcome you to the family of faith, but I don't want you to stop there. The new myth is I don't need a church. I, I've been studying myself. The Holy Ghost is my teacher. No, you need someone to also help guide you so you can learn the word of God. So I beseech you to find you a Bible teaching and preaching ministry that believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ and that believes in the fivefold principle of the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher that will help you. The apostle governs to make sure that the doctrine is sound. The, the prophetes, the prophet, hears the voice from God and decrees and declares what God has said. The evangelizo preaches the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to bring you to salvation. But it is the pastor, the poeman, that equips you to grow in your relationship with God. He protects and nurtures you, or she protects you. But it is the teacher that helps equip you, to edify you, to build your relationship up in the things of God. And if you've done that, you can please, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, we want to be a part of that. You can write us at 6211 Sierra Avenue, Fontana, California, 92336, PMB hashtag 1386. Or you can email me at cfmi.jhines at gmail.com. To let us know that you have received Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And we will love to pray with you and send you out evangelistic material to help you grow in your intimacy and your relationship with Christ. Glory be to God. We're excited for you. Don't give up. Continue to press in and learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Susan will be back with us next week continuing on. As I hope your appetite is getting wet because I'm telling you mine is really opening my eyes or illuminating to me what's getting ready to come this way. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We thank God for you today. And we pray that God will bless you throughout the rest of this week. And as before we leave, we believe in releasing the priestly benediction, the blessing over you, that God may bless you. According to number 6 and 25 and verse 27, the Bible says that God tells Moses how to bless the children of Israel on this wise. And he says, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and may the Lord be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his continent upon you, and may the Lord give you peace. This and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless everybody.